everyone welcome to jdk master class guys in today's video we are going to see the titration curve for sgpo4 and some problems related to sgpo4 we will solve here previous years of question papers of msc from bc university and you can find these questions in csir net and gate also i have already uploaded videos on a strong acid and a strong base and weak acid versus a strong base or weak base versus a strong acid you can find the link in the description box if you have any other doubt related to acid base titration you can post your doubts in the comment section i will try to resolve it now we'll solve some questions first is what is the criteria for selecting an indicator for the titration so we'll see the first point is there should be a change in the color at the equivalence point means in the acid and base the indicator should have different color and the reaction should be very fast and it should not react with the analyte these are the criteria for selecting an indicator you can give here one example for example you can give phenolphthalein and its ph range in both acid and basic medium Next question is comment on the titration curve for SVPO4. This question may belong to three to four marks category. Since they are asking you titration curve, you have to plot the titration curve here. You can see here we have plotted this uh, pH with respect to the H plus ions, and uh, you can see there are three midpoints in this. Three buffer solutions are there. Since uh, this is triprotic acid SVPO4, you have three equivalence point here. But the third equivalence point is uh, not clearly visible because it comes in very alkaline medium. So basically, the SgPO4 behaves like diprotic acid only, and you will see two sharp equivalence point. So we will now see first buffer zone where you have started your titration with NaOH, and stepwise dissociation of hydrogen will occur. So SgPO4. When you start adding NaOH, it will convert into H2PO4 minus. And at first midpoint, which is your first buffer solution, the two species will be in equal concentration. Then, if you continue the titration, it will reach your first equivalence point where entire H2PO4 will convert into H2PO4 minus. That is the first equivalence point. On continuation with base, you will have the second buffer zone. Where H two PO four minus and H PO four two minus species will be in buffer zone. Uh, the ratio will be equal. That is your second buffer, second midpoint. After continuation, you will reach here second equivalence point, where entire H two PO four minus will convert into H PO four two minus. So second equivalence point, you have H P PO four two minus only. And uh, after continuation, you will see there is third buffer zone. Where the third proton also will dissociate into PO4 three minus, and you will have the two species in equilibrium at the third midpoint or third buffer zone. And after continuation, entire HPO4 two minus will convert in PO4 three minus. That is your third equivalence point, and we can calculate the pH for each equivalence point by using the respective formulas. So you can see. For first equivalence point where you have H two PO four minus only, you can take uh, this formula. Take take the help of this formula. H plus is equal to under root K A one K A two. This is the straightforward formula which gives you the correct answer. There are long methods also to solve it, but uh, with respect to the number of uh, marks and for competitive exam, you can take the help of these formulas. Second equivalence point, you have only H P P O two minus. And you can calculate the concentration of H plus by using under root K A two and K A three, where K A one, K A two, K A three are the dissociation constant. Third equivalence point, you have only P O four three minus species left, and since the medium is alkaline, so you can calculate the concentration of O H minus by using the formula under root K W divided by K A three into concentration of P O four three minus. So with the help of these three formulas, you can find the concentration of H plus, and so you can find pH value. Next question: We have some numericals here to discuss of two marks. 
Very simple question, determine the pH of a solution, H plus concentration is given and we know the formula, pH is equal to minus logarithm of H plus and you can put the value here, the steps are given here, how to solve it, minus minus will become plus, put the values, you will get the pH for the above question. Next is calculate the H plus ion concentration of 0.01 molar of NaH2PO4. K1 and K2s are given. So, one way is you can use a straightforward formula here. So, we will find out the species which is present is H2PO4 minus. So, that is first equivalence point and we know the formula for H plus under K1, K2. Both the values are given here. You can find out the answer which approximately it will be the same. H plus is 2.12 into 10 minus 5 molar. So, by using this equation, you can calculate it quickly. The question belongs to 2 marks. Similarly, we have next question where they are asking you to calculate pH for 0.01 molar of Na3PO4, K3 is given. So, species which is present is PO4 3 minus, that is your third equivalence point. The medium is alkaline. Take the help of this formula where Kw is an ionic product. 1 into 10 to the power minus 14 is a value, K3 is given, concentration of PO43 minus is given, just put the value and calculate OH minus. Once you get OH minus, put it in the equation, KW is equal to H plus into OH minus, KW value we know, it is 1 into 10 to the power minus 14, H plus we can find it. Once you find H plus, you can put the value in pH minus logarithm of H plus and you will get the pH, you can notice the pH is highly alkaline 12.155 which suggests that PO4 3 minus that is the third equivalence point comes in very alkaline medium. So I hope uh, you understood the titration curve of H3PO4 and how to solve such kind of questions which comes for 2 marks. You can easily score it with the help of these easy formulas and faster formulas. Not only for your MSc but for your competitive exam also it is going to help you a lot. I will uh, try to solve your doubts and whatever doubts you are having related to this video or any other doubt in ACID base you can post it in the comment section. Happy learning. See you in the next video.